Okay. So, we are talking about what? Declarative memory. Based on facts and events. And you can recall those facts and events. They, that is, they can be declared. It is also called explicit memory, basically. And uh, in this, the information is explicitly stored and retrieved, is what need to be remembered. Then once more, this declarative memory is in turn divided into two varieties. Episodic memory and semantic memory. Episodic memory means you worked as a house surgeon. You have seen a OP poisoning case. You have seen a patient having hypersalivation. Based on that experience, if you remember that OP poisoning leads to hypersalivation, you call it as episodic memory. But you read pharmacology textbook. In that it is written that OP poisoning will lead to acetylcholine esterase inhibition. That's the reason acetylcholine is not metabolized. Hence acetylcholine levels is elevated. And those elevated acetylcholine will be secretomotor on the salivary glands leading to hypersalivation. So remembering that OP poisoning causes hypersalivation through all this is called as what you read, you have not seen, becomes the semantic memory is what you have to basically it is independent of personal experience. 80 percent of MD entrance preparation is based on 80 what? 95 percent is based on semantic memory. 5 percent based on episodic memory. But ultimately it depends on declarative memory. You must be in a position to declare the facts and figures without any confusion is all about MD preparation. Then there is something called implicit memory which is called procedural memory. You may be first time getting married, but the Purohit is every day performing marriages. Jitna aap ko tension rahega, Purohit ko utra nahi rahega. Because he ultimately knows, boy and girl are in a hurry to marry, whatever be the mantra, they anyway are going to live together. Right? So, that is implicit memory. If you are doing procedures, for example, uh, the repeated doing of the same procedure will bring you the memory which is then called implicit memory is what need to be remembered. So a diagram was given doctor what is the site of the action of the antiretroviral drugs. So what is our deal? Without antiretroviral drugs there is no entrance. Entrance is not for 200 only 199 marks and that one mark is for antiretroviral. Elvitic gravir, what is the mechanism? It is basically integrase inhibitor. Enfuvertide is a fusion inhibitor. Darunavir, ritonavir, indonavir, they are all the examples of protease inhibitors is what you have to basically remember. Now, when will LH surjakar? Very standard question. That is, uh, 24 to 36 hours. This internet will continue with the same speed now, I hope. I am little afraid if the broadcast is stopping in the middle. If the broadcast stops or video is stuck or if the voice and video are lagging, please punch into the chat window. That is the only way I can know that you are uh, comfortable and uh, clear. I hope the broadcast is clear. If you do massive transfusion to an adult male, it lead to dilutional thrombocytopenia as one of the complications. Good. Nine are reporting okay here. That's good. So, doctor, dilutional thrombocytopenia. Now, regarding sickle cell disease, a newborn baby, what he will be having predominantly? Hemoglobin F. F doesn't sickle. Why do we give hydroxyurea in case of the uh, sickle cell anemia? Hydroxyurea increases the HP of levels and decrease the sickling. That's a funda. Infants tend to have higher hemoglobin value. That is true, but that is not the reason why sickling doesn't occur in a newborn. So, if you take a two weeks, hemoglobin is 165. 
mg per deciliter. One month it become 14, two months it is 11.5. So, in a newborn Hp levels are higher is what you have to basically remember. Now, after acute blood loss, there is a leukocytosis. What is the reason? Basically, blood loss will lead to hypovolemia. Hypovolemia stimulates the baroreceptors. That in turn will lead to autonomic nervous system activation. And that lead to demargination of the neutrophils from the endothelium. And to endothelium, all the neutrophils will be like a pavement. The moment uh, the autonomic nervous system stimulates, they leave the wall of the vessel and start floating. So, that lead to increase in WBC count, uh, any post shock is what need to be remembered. A question porphyrias. Agar ho sake to do question porphyrias. Nim's entrance may there were two questions in porphyria. So, it is the LR dehydratase which converts LA into porphobilinogen and uh, the ferrochelatase which will convert protoporphyrin 9 into heme by incorporating iron. They are the two enzymes which are inhibited by the lead in lead poisoning. Same question next to AP entrance or DNB or AIMS if it comes no wonder. So, you have to be sure on porphyrias. One question on iron deficiency, anemia of chronic disease and uh, anemia of chronic inflammation, thalassemia, how do you differentiate all these various forms of mycocytic anemias? So, doctor, there is an impaired iron utilization in anemia of chronic disease. There is a reduction in the erythroid precursors which is responsible. But if you take iron deficiency anemia, there is a decreased iron store, not in the case of the anemia of chronic disease is what you have to basically appreciate. Bosenton, Sildenafil, they both are pulmonary vasodilators. Even Trepostinil, what is the mechanism of Trepostinil? Trepostinil is a prostocycline analog, which is a pulmonary vasodilator. But how do you administer it doctor? You will be administering it not orally, but subcutaneously or intravenously we administer. That is the point examiner want to know from you. If you take the blastomere, some of you are going to become in vitro fertilization specialists and you will do going to Sweden or Norway embryology super specialization. Your anatomy first year starts with embryology and you will be ending up with embryology if you become an IVF specialist. You do not need to know what is cesarean, and what is forceps, nothing. Only you are blastomere centric. So, doctor, the size of the early embryo remains unchanged after each cleavage, but the blastomere size decreases with each successive division, is what need to be remembered. Now, this is one of the historical age old question on definition of potency and efficacy. How many love letters you have written is not enough. How good you are on that moonlight of the first on the nuptial night ceremony is all to talk about potency. Right? So, doctor, drug A is more potent than drug B. Because if you take uh, the drug A, even with less dose only, it is able to produce a similar kind of a response. Baad kam kam jada, that is potency. Drug B ultimately achieved a higher amount of effect compared to drug A, that makes efficacy higher for the drug B. So, that is the fundamental difference. So, Barbiturates, they can lead to failure of OCPs is a known fact because they are the P450 inducers. Once more, what is a common high yield topic approach for entrance? Pharmacology means P450 inducers and P450 inhibitors. Like Supervatam, 
you must read all the drug list this side that side and finish namakam and chamakam should be done right doctor so but you all you only need to read what is definitely going to be asked not every trash that comes given in the entrance books eh? but this is a important trash layers of retina doctor both anatomy ophthalmology dono mein ye high yield topic hai so basically you have a retinal epithelium layer photoreceptor outer segment layer photoreceptor cell body layer outer plexiform inner nuclear inner plexiform ganglion cell and nerve fiber there are the various layers so the internal limiting membrane where is it located uh, here you have inner nuclear layer inner plexiform layer okay doc then uh, you have the nerve fiber layer where is the, this is the nerve fiber layer this is the place what is happening in the nerve fiber layer axons of the ganglion cells are basically located that's a point uh, you need to appreciate then one more fact was given is it the outer plexiform or inner plexiform where is the synapsing between bipolar and ganglion cells happening bipolar and ganglion cells it is the inner plexiform layer where they are synapsing not the outer plexiform layer that's what examiner want to know precisely from you okay doctor but anyway the layers of retina the layers of the skin they always had been the the topics of fascination for the examiner lithium lithium digoxin amiodarone adenosine there is no paper without them so you have to read easy question लिथियम की वजह से डायबिटीज इंसिपिडस होता है और ये एस होता इतने बार मॉक टेस्ट अटेंड करने के बाद भी अगर रॉन्ग करे तो वी विल गिव फ्री कोचिंग नेक्स्ट ईयर इफ यू डोंट गेट सीट सो डॉक्टर इट इज द न्यूट्रोफीलिया एंड हाइपो थाइराइडिज्म इज व्हाट यू टिपिकली कम अक्रॉस हु इज अ हॉस्टाइल विटनेस a hostel witness is the one who is uh, uh, not cooperating in investigation generally you will not ask leading questions during primary examination but hostel witness is an exception whenever the witness is hostile if he is unwilling or if he is biased or a child witness or the adult with communication problems there are few exceptions where you can request the judge please so it is not a cross examination still i want to ask some leading questions yes permitted 36 year old hit by a two wheeler to his right leg and ultimately has inability to dorsiflex and divert the foot but is able to do the plantar flexion so doctor sciatic nerve tibial nerve common peroneal nerve and their branches brachial plexus and their branches which are sensory which are motor pakka a question to zarur aayega anatomy ya orthopedics so what will common peroneal nerve will be doing doctor it will be innervating peroneus longus and brevis longus and basically peronea are what inverters or reverters of foot inverters of foot so that is the reason there is a inability to invert the foot and also it will supply the biceps femoris in the leg short head of the biceps femoris so that is the reason there is also a inability to actively dorsiflex is what need to be remembered in both subset of patients common peroneal nerve injury is common any patient who had been for bed rest for a long duration of time and those who have subjected to hyperflexion of the knee joint and those who are having peripheral neuropathy they are the subsets of population who need to be remembered now doctor you have a solitary pulmonary nodule classical radiology question 
patient comes in a complete panic doctor is it cancer or can i continue crying for the next parliamentary elections so at 50 there are different aspirations about how to live about 80 people have different aspirations how to live you ask somebody who lived for 84 85 you interview in opd they'll have a strong desire to touch that 100 and die they don't want to die because there's no fear of death at 85 why because all possible fears that night there was a pain here i thought cancer it did not turn out to be cancer that day he could not pass motion after a couple of days after eating few bananas he is able to pass motion only at 50 and uh, 70 there is a fear motion didn't happen is it colon cancer headache is there is it brain tumor so you ask a 80 year old they don't want to die that easily huh? so you must know how to decide a solitary pulmonary nodule malignant or not this is an example of a 1.5 centimeter coin lesion and uh, in a patient who had a prior colonic cancer due to metastasis. So doctor, diffuse calcification, central calcification, laminar, concentric, popcorn calcification, any of them are all treated to be benign. But stippled calcification, eccentric pattern of calcification, they are associated with malignancy. That's the reason the very statement option C calcification rules out malignant mass is unlikely. What type of calcification decides possibly what could be that mass benign or malignant is what need to be basically remembered. Parkinsonism may there is a difficulty for initiation both cerebellar dysfunction or basal ganglia dysfunction may initiate karne mein mushkil ho jata. There is a cockbill rigidity it being an extrapyramidal lesion, but that is not the reason for assertion. So that is what examiner want to know. One question doctor, Mayer Rokitansky Kastner Hasner syndrome or imperforate hymen or androgen insensitivity syndrome, right? A question jaru raiga. So, 13 year old comes to emergency with amenorrhea and typically she has normal secondary sexual characters, but there is a swelling on local examination with a bluish membrane bulging from the introitus. Classical description of imperforate hymen is what you have to basically remember. So, if you read standard topics, now you know the power of answering a question paper. Smoothly you can answer no struggle, but this is a dirty question, why? You know that uh, penicillin A's resistant penicillins are used for penicillin resistant isolates, because penicillin resistance is due to penicillin A's production. So, it is easy to remember. Vancomycin drug of choice for MRSCA that is also reasonable, but ultimately for you to close this question successfully, you need to know whether daptomycin can be used for the respiratory infection of staph or yes or not. How will you know? You can't know. I do don't know unless I prepared for this session. Doctor, daptomycin is used for systemic and life threatening infections caused by the gram positive organisms. Hamara staff gram positive hi hai, magar usme ek chota exception hai. It is useful for skin and skin structure related infections, staphylococcal bacteremia, right sided staph aureus endocarditis, but it is it binds avidly to the pulmonary surfactant that hence you can't use it for Staphylococcal pneumonias. Arre bab. Examiner pura book soch ke, dekhe, tharas ke, ek question de diya. Kaha answer karte vaisa, planned murderous questions, unless you know how to eliminate. It is difficult to eliminate, because one and three you know, they are dumb options. Second is like a knife, 
so you need to decide on second and uh, either get chopped by it or uh, live with it now doctor postural interosseous nerve paralysis postural interosseous nerve in the forearm beautiful question i told no a brachial plexus nerves their muscles their injuries how do they look like clinically which give sensory branches which give both sensory motor story is long so doctor loss of metacarpophalangeal ex joint extension is true because you have a passing interosseous nerve it is a continuation of the radial nerve radial nerve is the one which is the one which supplies all the extensors now comes a very interesting question is it important for the extension of the thumb or the extension of the wrist they both are different doctor same question can come in the next exam so you must be very sure on uh, how to answer it so i will make you the experts in this if there is a weakness of brachioradialis or the extension of the wrist joint and also the finger flexion if there is a weakness it is radial nerve lesion if there is a weakness of the finger extension this is what wrist extension if there is a radial deviation of the wrist on extension think of posterior interosseous nerve if there is a weakness of the finger extensors just like posterior interosseous nerve along with the flexors and also triceps think of a lesion at the level of c7 c8 that's a compression in the cervical uh, area if there is a general weakness of the upper limb marked by the deltoid triceps wrist extension and also finger extension think of a umn lesion which is a pyramidal tract lesion which affects all extensors simple law these four things you remember doctor what exactly examiner want to ask you to localize but this is a beautiful question you'll remember na weakness of the brachioradialis wrist extension finger flexion is radial nerve finger extension radial deviation of the wrist on extension is posterior interosseous triceps finger extensors and also flexors is c7 c8 and all extensors is basically corticospinal the earlier question is a seat determining question the one who answered that will go few steps ahead few steps ahead than the general crowd so that is the typical nature of uh, entrance uh, ultimate judgment is decided by 10 15 questions only assuming remaining normal immortal questions you have all answered like a regular immortal huh? so opioid dependence you use lofexidine clonidine naltrexone but not etanol definitely not etanol a female child has taken a button battery of a toy button toy may button battery raita na radiograph shown that it is located in the stomach it is measuring less than 2 cm too much an intelligent question based on the treatment algorithm do you think any guy worth a pinch of his salt for md entrance might have read it earlier and answered it correctly impossible impossible pure situational guess if it turns right you are a great guy if it didn't turn right don't worry you still have some lifelines left for you so what is the protocol about children swallowing things suppose if the patient is symptomatic or if the suspected foreign body has any dangerous characteristic like it is large than 2 cm long or if it is sharp or if the caretaker don't know what did he swallow 
Then what did they say? Before going for the next diagnostic procedure, first to do CT with three dimensional reconstruction or MRI in this subset of people. Then in which subset of people CT or MRI is not necessary and unnecessarily do not rob the father who already do not have money with him to pay for the hospital bills. If it is of benign features, smaller than 2 centimeters, it is not sharp, it is not long, it is not a magnet, it is not a battery. Discharge the patient after a period of observation in a healthcare setting, finish. Do not do anything, no imaging, no bakwas. Where is urgent intervention required? Where you have need to do endoscopy. Whenever the injected object, ingested object is sharp and long, if it is a high powered magnet or if it is a disc battery which is there in the esophagus or stomach or whenever patient has airway compromise or if there is any evidence of esophageal obstruction, urgent intervention is required. Since it is a battery, what do you want to do doctor? Urgent intervention you need to do. Urgent endoscopic removal is what you have to ultimately do is a very, very important uh, protocol which you should not basically forget. What even by atavistic type of an epiphysis? A bone which is independent phylogenetically, but it is now fused with another bone like coracoid process of the scapula is called atavistic. Once more doctor type of epiphysis, traction epiphysis, atavistic epiphysis, everything. Type of joint, pivot joint, different types of joints, another big list, explicit memory unit remember. Huh? Now, endotoxins versus exotoxins. From the pre-independent era, they are asking the same question, which is a table lying down in the Anantanarayanan. Exotoxic is protein in nature. Endotoxin is protein polysaccharide lipid. Exotoxin is heat label, labile. Exotoxin can be toxoidate. Even minute doses exotoxin is effective. Endotoxin need to be in large doses for it to be effective. So that is what examiner want to know whether you know the differences or not. A table worth remembering, doctor. Jet black tongue. One of the oldest questions, cocaine. Cocaine is the only local anesthetic that produces vasoconstriction. It is euphoric. Cocaine abuse is identified by a jet black tongue is what you need to remember. This is another dirty question. Severe acne, chest wall clavicular pain, inflammatory joint symptoms with otosclerosis of vertebrae and clavicles. First time in exam hall, you will be recognizing a counter topic. There is one advantage of preparing topic wise because that helps you to at least reach a differential diagnosis. Possibly, what examiner is struggling to ask you from which topic? This is a useless, unyielding, non yielding, whatever is the correct English. Sappho syndrome. Inflammatory bone disorders can be associated with skin changes. Sapho may hota hai S for synovitis, A for acne, P for pustulosis, as what you call Palmar pustulosis, which the patient will be having. This is called Palmar pustulosis. H is hyperostosis, O is osteitis. The combination is basically called Sapho syndrome. Do not be afraid. Once more examiner want to tell you, sab kuch padh ke aaye to khali jo padhe usme puche to kya maza hai. Let me ask from unknown unknowns in your database. Since there is no negative marking, you can always try to give some uh, selective response to this mixed signals coming from the question. So doctor. Typically, hemolytic anemia is a consequence because RBC depends primarily on glycolysis. Any glycolytic enzyme deficiency will lead to hemolysis. Ectopic pregnancy, we use transvaginal ultrasound. Hysteroscopy may, which is not a distension medium, big, it is only guesswork that you need to use. Basically, we use two types, doctor. 
volatile non volatile within non volatile otherwise fluid media viscous non viscous so lot of people consider co2 is only for diagnostic purpose because there is a risk of embolism to use co2 high viscosity fluids that we use include hypertonic solution of 32 percent dextron or 70 in 10 percent glucose then low viscosity media include 3 percent sorbitol 1.5 percent glycerin and 5 percent mannitol is what you have to ultimately remember doctor preterm premature rupture of membranes at 32 weeks what do you want to do it is a favorite topic in obstetrics it is a day in and day out affair in obstetrics to handle the women who have broken their waters and come to you at 30 second week and you need to take a call on what to do next and labor has not yet started so doctor how do you diagnose prom sudden gush of fluid so once you are sure that there is prom look at the gestational age of the women 24 to 31 weeks you give corticosteroid administer antibiotics deliver at 34th week of gestation or 32 to 33 if the lung maturity is indicated after doing amniocentesis protocol if the woman is at 32 or 33 weeks of gestation give steroid give antibiotics consider amniocentesis or deliver at 34th week but if she is between 34 to 36 weeks you can give antibiotics and group b streptococcus prophylaxis within 24 hours after the rupture labor begins if it doesn't bring induce a labor and then deliver that is the important uh, protocol now doctor one histology slide then only it is called nimset paper so you have proliferative progenitor cells in the crypt of Liberkens histology cross section then uh, you are also having uh, the absorptive uh, three types of cells absorptive goblet and uh, progenitor cells in the structure of the crypt of Liberkens so what is the hangman's fracture so doctor clay shoveler's fracture hangman's fracture all these important eponymous names in the orthopedics in spine fractures one question will definitely come similarly in the thumb also bennett's fracture which is intraarticular which is not intraarticular all those fundas you have to brush it so hangman's fracture involves both parts interarticularis of the second cervical vertebra due to hyper extension not flexion so examiner tried to lure you into the theory of flexion but it is hyper extension on day 28 of menstrual cycle menstrual bleeding is lasting for few days i told now apoptosis is a high yield topic among options if apoptosis is there what else can be the answer close eyes and answer it that is going to be true because the examiner has to frame one question on apoptosis there is no go probably tougher situations will be if you ask about anti apoptotic pro apoptotic genes what's up up to by now like uh, vedic pundits you might have reached the ninth cloud of the Vedanta with only one week more for the state MD entrance. Right, doctor? You must reproduce. Mammography. With increasing age, when the breast become less dense, mammogram can pick it up. Young breast will be denser. So, mammogram can't pick. Sensitivity will be low. That's what you need to basically appreciate. 35 year old is having a low CD4 count comes with PaO2 60 and a raised LDH. What else is that? Pneumocystis carnea pneumonia. What will you do? Put oxygen mask. Give hydrocortisone 100 milligrams injection. 
put a double strength trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole in the mouth. There were hundreds of occasions which we did while doing MD in NIMS. So obviously without a question on pneumocystis carinae, ARDS, what will you do? There is no paper. Codman's triangle, you see it in osteosarcoma is a true statement. But is it due to infiltration? No sir. Because it is also seen in non-osteosarcoma situations also. Even in Ewing sarcoma you will see, even in osteomyelitis you will see. So it is basically a pattern of periosteal reaction which you see. It is not due to infiltration of the cancer cells is what examiner want you to commit before you take the MS orthopedics prestigious seat at uh, Nizam's. HIV infection may, what is a common malignancy, doctor? Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Microscopic hematuria, even relatives, pedigree, related people also have got a asymptomatic microhematuria in them. So, what is the likely diagnosis? There is no hearing loss. So basically there is an entity called thin glomerular basement membrane disease. Thin glomerular basement membrane disease. Uh, but he neither had hypertension nor proteinuria. Ultrasound of the abdomen was normal. So doctor, uh, based on the inheritance pattern you must know the differences between alports and other differentials of the alports. Myopic individual with transient flashes of light is a classical story of myopia lead to posterior degeneration and retinal detachment is one of the important risks to be basically remembered. Now a deep transverse arrest does not have a mechanism for normal delivery and uh, fundal height will be more than what is expected. So, that is how you recognize. Fever, loose motions, anemia, thrombocytopenia, schistocytes being shown, broken fragmented RBCs. What else doctor do you need to diagnose other than HUS? You do not need this uh, image also actually speaking. You do not need image also. Metaclopramide is a dopamine antagonist, mechanism of action. One of the simplest question in the planet. Why do you do sterilization? Because it can even kill the spores. Both assertion and reason are the true statements. Now, Karu 1 is body temperature, Karu 2 is rigor mortis, Karu 3 is slowly decomposition, time after death. Some graphs nahi huye to wo nimset kaise hoga. So, nowadays all India MD entrance also is uh, DNB also is all uh, on a computer monitor. Videos also can be placed in order to test your knowledge like USMLE, Indian USMLE. But questions will be of Indian nature, straight fact based questions. Even if computers are given, images are given, uh, everything is given, uh, it will be a striptease with fact based questions. HCG doctor, LSH, TSH, FSH, they all share the common subunit with the HCG. I don't know, a question Asha ke upar, jarur hoga, nahi hai to aspirants will have nirasha. So, National Rural Health Mission, NRHM, accredited social health activist, jarur aega doctor, you must know. Anganwadi worker ka kaam kya hota, Asha ka kaam kya hota, sab kuch thoroughly. Karpana Arenesia, this is called brain sand, is what you typically see in the case of the pineal gland histology, is what you have to basically remember. Phonesthenia may typically seen in the loudly speaking teachers and advocates, without a voice they are not worth it, along with good logic and reasoning of course. Easy fatigability, 
um, of the thyroretinoids and interretinoids typically occur with phonesthesia. But what are the laryngoscopy findings in phonesthesia? There will be an elliptical space between vocal cords due to thyroretinoid involvement. There will be a triangular space in the posture glottis due to interretinoid involvement. There can be a keyhole appearance in the glottis when both of them get involved. That is the typical laryngoscopic appearance of the phonesthesia, phonesthenia. Asthenia is weakening, fatigue of the vocal cord muscles. Now, doctor, hyperhomocysteinemia, factor V lethal, antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, all prothrombotic states, favorite topic of examination. So normally what will protein C will do doctor, protein C become activated protein C. Activated protein C in turn will go and inactivate the factor 5A and also it will inactivate factor 9A and 8A. So that is a very important function. So what is the problem in the people with factor 5A lethal? Their 5A cannot be inactivated by the naturally formed activated protein C. Because of that factor 5A remains to be in high level. That high levels of factor 5A is responsible for the procoagulant state is what you have to basically remember doctor. Staghorn calicline. What are the different approaches for treatment of staghorn calicline? So doctor, percutaneous nephrolithotomy. PNL and shockwave lithotripsy or shockwave lithotripsy monotherapy or open surgery. There are all the choices which are available for uh, management of stag horn calicoli is what you have to remember. Which is called a somatoform autonomic nervous dysfunction because of some psychiatric uh, conflict. Patients will start feeling the symptoms of autonomic dysfunction. So there is no true autonomic dysfunction. They suddenly feel as if they have a heart attack, they will have tremors, they will have flushes, they will have palpitation, sweating, bloating, blah, blah, blah. That is called as somatoform autonomic nervous dysfunction is what need to be remembered. Where do you find Ludwig's angina? Ludwig's angina in a pure sense is a cellulitis. Submandibular, sublingual, submental spaces of the face is the typical location for finding of the Ludwig's angina is what you have to basically remember. Hereditary colorectal cancer. Many times in our Sunday mock test we used to say, female endomatous polyposis is the only condition which is pre-malignant with 100% tendency to become malignant. So if you happen to discover uh, the polyps, you have to do prophylactically colectomy. But the non-discovery at age 20 does not rule out the possibility of FKP. So the remaining statements are all true. A farmer typically with a rod and ulcer, basal cell carcinoma, melanoma, squamous cell carcinoma, iske bina surgery ka first 200 pages khatam hota kya kabhi nahi hota. Hemobilia may, what do you see? Pain abdomen, upper GI bleed and jaundice is what you typically come across. This is a beautiful question. Macula lutea. It is an area of retina which is rich in cones without rods. True statement. It lies two disc diameters. True statement. But is foveola is it 1.5? There is a difference between fovea versus foveola. The center of the macula is called fovea centralis, which is 1.5 mm. And the central floor of the fovea is called foveola, which is 0.35 mm. Where is Rakshasa's heart? Prince has to cross seven oceans, find a tree. In the middle of the tree, there is a parrot. Parrot has a heart, heart has a chamber, chamber has a, like that, you read fairy tales, no, like that. That is fovea, uh, foveola, 0.35. Agar fovea, 0.35 bolke, uh, 1.5, foveola, 1.5 bolke, kahi soch vichar ho gaye to, doob gaye. 
samundar me one more gone simple stupid question on a simple silly cause losing entrance it doesn't happen automatically you are red guy well red guy you will reflexly answer correct answers in exam hall let me tell you the one who is very carefully answering questions is not the guy who is going to get seat murphy's law if you are not uh, what is that called as hyper vigilant in your nature like a cocaine abuser and can comfortably answer and sell the paper that is the attempt where you are getting seat taken as my word and you are all worth it doctor because you read very well but even b12 and folate dna synthesis in the bone marrow require between b12 and folate that's the reason we get anemia if they are deficient now what is the modern concept only single dose of antibiotic is all that is required and no evidence that post operatively you dump patient with lot of antibiotics it is going to benefit no that is what the recommendations of the studies with a level 1 evidence has shown dosulepin is which i told no and psychiatry will be very poor psychopharmacology any student at least if you know classification of drugs what are ssris what are snris more than enough on the top of it if you read the side effects also means or examiner will get heart attack doctor dosulepin is a tricyclic antidepressant it is used for the major depressive disorder and also for neuropathic pain if you are practicing geriatrics after 50 doctor what is the main issue either either joint pain or muscle pain or nerve pain if there is no pain that itself is a big pain because nobody is there to talk with you or spend with you they say you belong to different generation we belong to different generation <laughs> so that's a whole issue 23 year old what did area nausea vomiting after 6 hours after eating food poisoning you are all experts you know because all md enters preparation where does it happen small small rooms eating anywhere on chai bandi also ha huh? and preparing for entrance good number of episodes you might have had based on the incubation period you will decide which drug to take 21 year old with ovarian lesion with hair cheesy sebaceous material wow even a newborn baby can answer it correctly cystic teratoma where multiple tissues are present menorrhagia that is increased bleeding without any genital tract or endocrinological abnormality defines dub since there is no gynecology obstetrics department in uh, nims uh, obviously questions will also be of a lighter vein and you prepared for a state md entrance where you are ready to answer fetal pelvis this side what that side what what is the diameter everything like a tailor you are ready for exam this is a small lightweight question but general medicine orthopedics urology surgery they are and anesthesia are the places which are the talent testing questions will be asked in nimset every year now benign tumors of the nasal cavity doesn't include i mean includes only ringer's tumor anyway you know neuroblastoma squamous cell carcinoma both of them are not benign so only option is 1 and 4 1 and 4 nahi hai kali 4 hona chahiye even if you are not sure what is 1 i am also not sure so dr ringer's tumor is a benign warty neoplasm along the lateral wall of the nasal cavity instead of growing outward it will growing into the stroma typically seen between 40 to 70 and there's a chance of recurrence only 10 to 15% of them become malignant if they become they become squamous cell carcinomas 30 year old female s1 q3 t3 doctor this is like doing a night duty in casualty in a tertiary hospital like nims 
pulmonary embolism. Definitely one question will come on pulmonary embolism. What is the investigation of choice? CD pulmonary angiogram, easy to say but difficult to practice because patient will have severe dyspnea if you want to take in a setting of acute pulmonary embolus. Then what type of receptors depending upon how fast they are undergoing adaptation. So, you must know what is the division slowly adapting include Merkel Ruffney intermediate adapting are nerve fiber endings, rapidly adapting are Presenian, Meissner, hair follicle receptors and some free nerve endings. Free nerve endings can be any of them, but uh, Meissner and Presenian are rapidly, Ruffney and Merkel are slowly adapting. How you will remember? You have to remember because generally receptors is one of the type of uh, high yield topic which I mentioned in physiology high yield topic list which you need to be very sure about doctor. About Wilson's disease, penicillamine is avoided, true and it can cause bone marrow suppression which is also true, but why penicillamine? is avoided. Wilson is a combination of GIT, ophthalmological, articular and neurological. All these are there no. So, neurological symptoms can worsen in about 5.3 percent of patients who are receiving penicillamine that is the point. So, one surgical instrument was shown it is asked which type of retractor it is. Very difficult doctor, if you are shown Cleland's forcep only, exam may recognize karna, bahut mushkil hai on the top of it which type of refractor, pure luck, do not worry if you did it wrong, Langenbeck, this called an example of a Langenbeck, Langenbeck. Now, if a person did a crime under post hypnotic trace, still he is held responsible for a criminal act, why? No person can be hypnotized against his will. No person can be given offered a coaching against his will. Only if he is willing to learn something and come to class prepared only any coaching guru can be able to inject something. So, any crime done under post hypnotic trace still carries the criminal liability and responsibility is what you have to basically remember doctor. Ah, this is the easiest question in the planet to give you little relax the mood. EMV is Glasgow coma scale. Is it neurocardiogenic syncope? What do you find? More common in young females, incontinence can occur, short duration of premonitory symptoms less than 5 seconds is not a feature. Polycystic kidney, hyalus cell tumor, adenoblastoma in sub chisome, ovary produce karega androgens. But adrenal, adenogenital syndrome may adrenal is responsible for the production of excessive androgens is what need to be remembered.